I'm Mike. So this video is going to cover the new and improved updater. Now, those of you who use Exodus version five may have noticed that there was an updater included. It's uh, an odd story in that I tested it constantly before release. Uh, it looked like it was working fine. And then I released the pack and it no longer worked. There was a timing issue where it tried to do the second part of a loop too fast and it didn't have enough time to uh, finish what the first thing was doing, so it thought that there was nothing to do. And unfortunately, that updater was not smart enough to update itself. So that required uploading a fixed update bat to the Discord, which people could then download. Once they did that, they were able to grab version 5.1, which had several game updates, but there were severe limitations to that updater. You could not add new games because that would require editing the metadata XML file and the, uh, well, the platform XML file that LaunchBox uses. But you can't edit the file while LaunchBox is open. Uh, that forces, uh, the way LaunchBox works is it reads the platform file once when it starts up from what I can tell. It puts it into memory and it reads, and it reads from memory. And then at that point, when you exit LaunchBox, it takes all the values in memory and writes them back to the XML. If you were to modify the XML while LaunchBox is running, it doesn't pick up those changes unless a plugin or something is running at that time that tells it to refresh itself from the XML. We didn't have anything like that in place at the time. So we couldn't add new games. We were pretty limited. We could, we could do configuration file tweaks. Um, we could fix some run.bat issues, things like that. Uh, but we couldn't make any changes to anything that was front-end based since the front-end was running at the time. The new update process is much more uh, in-depth in terms of what it's capable of. At this point, it can even update itself. Uh, the process is no longer tied to only running when LaunchBox is running either. Uh, at this point, when you kick the process off, um, it's through a plugin. The plugin uh, then turns around and says, hey, you've got LaunchBox running, running right now. Please close it. Once you do close it, it detects it's been closed and it kicks off the update. This lets us update. We can add games. We can change the metadata. We can fix configuration files. We can pretty much do anything we want to the pack, including update the updater. Uh, and we can update the plugin that, through that method too. Uh, so it's a lot more versatile than the previous one. Another big benefit is the original one required a hard link. It always looked in the same place for the update. Uh, which meant the update had to stay fairly small because I had to host the update. The new one goes and checks the file that resides on my website and that file has two pieces of information in it. The current version number and a link to that version number. Um, let's go ahead here and take a look. I'm going to switch over here to my desktop. Uh, what we have up here in the top corner is the update folder and it has three files in it. The index, the update.bat, and the update installed. Dot bat. Uh, when update.bat gets called, it's right down here, it starts off and it's going to come in here and the first thing it does is check out to see if um, there's any language packs installed. You can see here it's checking for the German one and if it finds it, it runs this section here. Then it does it for the Chinese one. Now this could be a little smoother. We could have it have one procedure for all languages. The problem is we may be adding more languages as we go and we haven't built that array out yet. So for now, this is the uh, most foolproof way to do it. After it's done checking all the languages, we get to the actual uh, English update. It goes on, it checks for the ver.exo file that resides on my website. <coughs> Excuse me. It downloads it and it finds both strings in there. It finds the version number. And then it looks over here in the version folder, and that tells you what version you're currently running. So this is 6.0 over here. And it compares the two. And if there's a difference between them, then clearly the one that's out there is newer than what you have. Because you can't have one newer than what is currently out, right? So after it does a file compare on the two, it then decides if it's a true or false update. And it's already checked for the other one. So now we know how many updates are true. We've already set all those variables. We come in here and you're going to get told the version you're currently running and the, cur the version that's available. And it's going to do that for every language pack if you have. It's only for the language packs that you have. It will not display it for a language pack that you don't have. 
and then it's going to say, do you want to go ahead and download them and apply? Uh, once you click yes, assuming you do, at this point, it goes and checks your task list, and it's looking to see if you have LaunchBox running. And if you do, it's going to tell you to go ahead and close it out. Um, and then it pauses. At that point, when you hit go, it checks that loop again. And if it's closed, it will continue. If not, it's going to tell you, hey, man, you still have, you've got to close it out. And now this might happen because it does take about 15, 20 seconds after you close LaunchBox for it to close in the task manager. So if you close and immediately hit go, it might say, hey, it's still open. And that's because it is. It's writing all that stuff that was in memory to the XML files. So once that's cleared out of memory, it's going to continue on. It's going to grab ARIA, which is our uh, downloader. It's a command prompt downloader. It's going to go through and it's going to check all the different link files and let's go ahead and pull them down as it finds them. It's going to update the version to the new version you have. At that point, it'll pass it over to the update underscore install dot bat file. Now, the update is a zip file of the diffs that have changed in the game, not the whole game over again. So if we change just the CONF file, then it unzips that file and it overwrites the ones out in your launch folder. So the next time you launch the game, you get the new conf file. Or the, if we change the launch files or the, uh, the install files, then that just gets written directly to the launch folder. So the next time you launch, you get it. If it's a change to the actual game, though, then there is a new folder that shows up in your update folder. And it will contain all the diff files for the game. So if 20 games are updated, there will be 20 zip files in there with just the changes. So if we added some new configurations, if we added some new drivers, uh, whatever we changed will be in that file. And the installer is smart enough that when it installs a game, it'll install from the base folder, and then it will look over at the update folder, and if it finds a file with the same name there, it will unzip that file on top of what it just decompressed. So that'll be the most recent files. The update does not remove files from your folder. It only updates existing files in the folder. Now what happens though if one of the 20 games that got updated is a game you've already installed and you've been playing? Um, if we didn't come up with a procedure for that, then you'd have to uninstall the game and reinstall the game to get the patch. Well, that's where the update installed bat file comes from. At this point, it's going to come in here, and it's a very simple process. There's two uh, little functions here, and the first one is going to go through. <coughs> excuse me. It grabs the file name. Um, it goes through the folder in, uh, of all the updated files. It grabs the file name. It checks it against this index here. So if it found 1830 railroads and robber barons zip, it'll see that on here and it's coming in here and it's grabbing the first part of that, which is 1830. Now it knows the folder name to look for. So it goes over to your Exodus folder and it looks to see, is there a folder called 1830 here? Because if there is, that means you've got the game installed. So if you do, it goes ahead and it grabs, goes ahead and grabs the update file and unzips it into that folder. So in real time, it goes, it updates all the games that you already have installed that you have updates for. Process two is the same thing, just for the other language packs that are out there. Uh, that's the other details about this. Um, it is a rolling update, not a sequential update, which means uh, when 6.01 comes out, you know, say that's 15 games. Um, whether they're up, say it's 15 updated games and 30 new games. Well, when 6.02 comes out, it will contain those files plus whatever new stuff. And then 03 will contain all the things from 01 and 02. The reason we're doing it that way is because it is much more complex to host multiple updates and then write a script that can tell where you're at, where the newest one is, determine all the updates it needs in between, and then it would have to go out sequentially, and it would have to grab update one, pull it down, apply it. Grab update two, pull it down, apply it. Grab update three, pull it down, apply it. It does mean that the updates can get larger faster because they uh, are rolling, so they keep adding two of them. But what this means is every time the update file gets big enough, that's to, to be determined right now what that means, we will update the actual pack that we've released in the main torrent. So let's say we get to 6.05, and now the update file has got to be 20 gigabytes, 30 gigabytes, getting a little bit out there. At that point, we're gonna go ahead and just roll all the changes into the base pack, and we will do a, a brand new full pack release, kind of like a roll up that they do like with Windows or something, 
and now we will just do a fundamental roll up release of Exodus 6.05. And at that point, the next update will just be 06. Okay. Um, and it will tell people that have 6.0 when they get, if it says 6.06 comes out and you still have 6.0, it'll tell you, hey, you need to go get 6.05 first before you start applying 6.06. I hope that makes sense. Um, the update is something that should allow me to, or us as a, as a group, to release updates much more frequently. So we sometimes get people come in and there's a game that they love and they can't, they find something wrong with it and I'm able to fix it immediately but maybe they're not savvy enough to take that fix or maybe they don't know what to do. I can now roll that fix out and within a day or two, um, you know, assuming I have enough other things to, to warrant a full update, I can push that out and have it go to everybody, including themselves almost immediately. Uh, the last major release we did was three years ago, October 31st of 2020. So instead of having to wait three years to get an update for your Exodus, we're hoping maybe once a month, maybe every other month uh, to put an update out. And that also means there's a lot more motivation for putting new games in the pack because right now it's, I'm going to add a hundred games. I'm going to add a hundred games. And then it's like, especially when we're adding some, the ones we're at right now, we're like a lot of shareware, a lot of homebrew, not really high quality. I've fretted in the past over diluting the quality of the entire project with some of these games. And, uh, if I can push them out in little packs of 30 or 40, that makes it a lot more reasonable and it's not quite as massive of a task. So it's a lot more bite-sized. Plus, it allows me to focus a lot more time on Windows 3X, Exoskin VM, Exo Apple IIe, Exo Apple IIe GS. And then, you know, I can wake up on a Monday, come sit down and just knock out 30 or 40 games, do all my bug fixes, do my metadata fixes, add some metadata, pack it up, and push out. You know, in a day or two, I can make that month's update for Exodus and then go right back to the other projects. Whereas, when I'm working on it currently, I get a few hundred games at it. I get a bunch of changes done and it feels like I need to keep working on the pack to get all that pushed out. I need to do enough work to make a new release worth it. And so that turns into all the other projects get sidelined and I'm back to full time on Exodus almost immediately after I've just released the last one. Uh, this should make it a lot easier to work on the other projects and be able to put out periodic updates for Exodus. And the great thing is I can use the same updater script for all the other projects too. So once I get the new updated Windows 3X out, I can add this updater to it and do uh, periodic updates to that as well. And a really important one is Scum VM because every time they do a new release, it changes, they change command line launch IDs, they change game IDs, they change so many things that we can't just grab the new version of Scum VM. We have to retest every single game every time they put one out because they break you know, 10, 15 of our launch scripts every time they put one out. Uh, and so it's a lot of testing. So being able to put one out and then catch those and, and update them makes a lot more sense. And they put out an update in November and we're stuck waiting until January, February to finish our testing to be able to push that out to everybody else. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to version six as much as everybody else. I know I get a lot of questions. When is version six coming out? If I knew, I would announce it. Um, there's a lot of moving parts right now, and they're not all internal to our project. We're trying to get the latest update of staging in. We're trying to get the, uh, the newest version of LaunchBox in. We are um, translating files. We're adding new languages. I'm writing new scripts even now. Um, even though I've already locked down adding new games, I've locked down a bunch of the new stuff. So we're not adding new things. We're not doing bug fixes anymore. Um, there's still a lot of moving parts including the light version, which will be an upcoming video. Thank you for your time.